Hey y'all, Hurdle here again, doing what I enjoy most, making Heroes of the Storm videos. That's right, and this week I'll actually be talking about my last hero release feature, Sally Whitebane. I didn't really cover the Mephisto launch, uh, and the reason for that is, honestly, I kinda didn't know it was coming, and then it happened, and I was just sorta like, well, crap. But, that's then, and this is now, and we are here today to talk about why and how to play Sally Whitebane in Heroes of the Storm, so let's get on with the show. I picked up White Mane when she released, and immediately I hated playing her. Honestly, I felt like she was a healer who was super squishy, but she had to get up close and personal to deal damage and heal, and I was just like, say what? But I remembered the lesson of Yorel, and I decided to stick with her. Honestly, I'm not the best at this game, and it usually takes me a little while to pick up new heroes. I know this now, so I reminded myself to just keep trying her out and see if I still hated her in a few levels. I'm happy to say that my mind has changed after a few patches, and I actually really like White Mane now. Let's talk about why we're all here today, and that's simply why and how to play Sally White Mane in Heroes of the Storm. So let's jump into it. So first off, let me apologize for not doing more Heroes videos lately. I got wrapped up in the new WoW expansion, plus all these new games coming out, work, and blah 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 blah. I apologize for letting the one thing I really enjoy making YouTube videos about slip, and I hope you guys will be patient with me while I figure out what I'm doing here. Now that I got that off my chest, let's talk about someone else's chest, specifically Sally Whitemane, High Inquisitor of Scarlet Crusade, and now one of the four horsemen of the Ebon Blade. If you've played any WoW at all, you've no doubt run into her and then killed her while dungeoning in Scarlet Monastery. If you're into cosplay, you or someone you know has probably cosplayed her since for some reason she is super popular. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the incredibly revealing costume. Now, at long last, her chance to play her in Heroes has arrived. So is she worth it? Is she fun? Absolutely, although she has a higher learning curve than many other healers. What I'm trying to say here is that White Man is tough, but worth it. She has an extremely high healing potential, as well as the ability to contribute some noteworthy damage to any fight, but in careless hands, she's worse than useless. Let's talk about what that means for you, the novice trying to pick up such a complex and fascinating hero. Again, probably not just because they're revealing costume. First off, you're going to need to practice with her. Like, a lot. No, seriously, a lot. Getting her positioning just right is the absolute key to mastering her playstyle. You can't get too close to the fighting because you'll be crushed in seconds, she has no defense, but you can't stay too far back because 90% of your healing is going to come from you dealing damage to the enemy team, which is also affected by your positioning, since her searing lash initially fires straight ahead of her at your cursor, but the second lash will go crosswise to the first. This makes for some real positioning problems. I try to keep a mid-range, behind the brawlers, but ahead of the range. This lets me stay in the fight, pick up the vulnerable heroes, and avoid the worst of the fighting. However, this leads to the second key to White Mane, and that's keeping her zeal active on friendly heroes, including herself in many cases. Using your Q, Desperate Plea, heals for a small amount and buffs the hero with zeal. Zeal transfers 100% of any damage White Mane deals to heroes as healing to whoever it's on. Practically, this means two or three targets at once, since it falls off pretty quickly, but it's the key to her healing potential. Zeal is kind of a difficult concept for me to work with because it requires you to be an offensive healer, which is somewhat new in HOTS. Most heroes are defensive or passive healers like Malfurion and Lucio. White Mane requires you to play like an aggressive mage, which leads to team fight reversing plays in the hands of a skillful, experienced white main player. Her best damage heal spell is Inquisition, her W, a channeled spell that takes for 3 hits and slows the enemy by 30%. This is an excellent way to incapacitate the backline for a gank while simultaneously healing yourself, your tank, and your assassin. However, getting to that point can be difficult, which is why we're here today. We've talked about Searing Lash, her E, Inquisition, her W, and Desperate Plea, her Q, so now let's move on to her ults, Divine Reckoning and Scarlet Aegis. Divine Reckoning is her offensive ult that creates an AoE circle that damages enemies in it for 4 ticks. Of course, this also feeds Zeal, so it has a lot of use. Her defense ult is Scarlet Aegis, an AoE heal that also boosts ally armor by 40 for 4 seconds. This is a strong teamfight ability, and honestly, I see value in both ults. I believe you should go for Witcher when your team seems to require more. If you're struggling to mitigate damage and need to heal everyone in teamfights because of bad positioning, scattered enemy focus, whatever, I'd go for Scarlet Ages, but if your team is working well together and you're not getting heavily focused, I'd suggest Divine Reckoning for the healing potential plus the added damage. As always, use your best discretion when it comes to each match, because there's no way that two matches will ever play out exactly the same. Quickly, let's talk talents. Again, I don't really like doing step-by-step -step talent builds. There are a million websites out there that will give you the optimal build for your hero if such a thing exists for each match, but I like to parse out a couple of general paths you can focus on and try to give you the tools to make the decision for yourself. For White Mane, there appears to be three basic talent paths to follow. First is your Desperate Plea path. You basically just pick all the talents with the Desperate Plea icon and it gets dramatically buffed, healing you when cast, increasing move speed, and healing done. 
it's a solid choice if you find yourself using Q a lot in a match, especially if you're the only healer, or you're healing a lot of different people at once. This is ideal if you're getting pushed away from the front and you can't heal enough damage for a seal to activate. Her second option is the Inquisition route, which falls more along the damage dealing path. You improve your Inquisition and add some buffs to your zeal along the way. She is, after all, primarily a healer, but this allows her to cast Inquisition on an ally to heal and lowers its cooldown, making it your go-to healing method. This is probably my favorite path because it gives you good utility and damage output while also dramatically raising your healing potential. However, the downside is it takes a lot of practice to get right because most of your healing is going to be coming from your damage. Please be patient when you're trying to learn this track, it's it's difficult. Finally, her utility build focuses on making Searing Lash more useful, but honestly I don't really enjoy this playstyle as much. I think her E talent is okay, but ultimately kind of underwhelming and it's not as much fun as Inquisition. I use it in my rotations of course, but I prefer the bigger buffs and utility from the other build. Last but not least, she has some killer storm talents. Of course you'd be wise to pick either ult related buff depending on which one you got. If you went for an inquisition build, you may be well served by subjugation if you're having trouble with enemy DPS. This lets you burn their DPS as well as mitigate a massive chunk of their damage, giving you double effect from one spell and setting the enemy team back in team fights. Purge the Wicked is an alternative to that, giving you tank busting ability that reduces enemy armor and puts a dot on them that deals significant damage. As always, use your best judgment for the match, and there's not really a bad choice here. I'm going to wrap up this guide here. I sincerely hope to help you guys out, and that you got some good starter tips to get going on your white bean mastery journey. If so, please let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe to help support what I'm doing, and show me some love. As always, thank you so much for spending your time with me. You could be anywhere else on YouTube right now, and I appreciate that you're right here. This is Hurdle saying peace and chicken grease, y'all.